Hello and welcome to my channel. I am at Hamcation in Orlando, Florida. Let me give you a report. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. My name is Scott and I'm going to give you a wrap up of my visit to Orlando, Florida. Hamcation. I brought my mobile setup behind me, my contest rover, and I haven't been to a large ham radio event in a long time, probably 20 years. And so I have taken this car, those of you who follow me for Volkswagen content know that I've taken this car to Volkswagen shows and it shows all right. I cleaned it up and get it ready for a car show and then I put my kooky amateur radio stuff on it and I get a lot of questions why or hey this is kind of neat, what can you do? And it's kind of cool, I'm being kind of an ambassador for ham radio. But this is the first time I've ever brought the setup to a ham radio convention and the car has been a really big hit here. I have been overwhelmed with all the visitors. Today is Sunday, it is the last day of the event. It's the event is going to wrap up here in just a couple of hours. And so very few visitors, very quiet today. It's windy, so hopefully you can hear me okay. And uh, yes, I thought I wanted to take the time to say thank you to all of you who I get the feeling uh, I've been interviewed by about six or seven YouTubers and I think that their channels may drive new subscribers to my channel. And so if you came by and visited me at Hamcation, I want to say thank you. It has been, uh, like I said, overwhelming. I was on my feet nonstop for about seven hours on Friday, a little less on Saturday, but still pretty, pretty engaged with people checking out the car. and. Yes, wow, what an honor. It's been fun. I was so busy that I really didn't even get a chance to get around and check out all of Hamcation. So I will share some B-roll with you of some of the things that I've seen. Uh, a lot of other cool exhibits here. Most are not here today, I think, because, uh, you know, it's the last day, so it's kind of wrapping up. Here pretty soon, I will package this up. I, one, of the, one of the common questions I receive is, do you drive with all that on your car? And the answer is yes, I do drive with all that on the car. Now, coming down here from Virginia, which is around 800 miles, I did pull everything in a trailer behind me and set it up. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that again. The trailer has been a cool place for me to throw all the stuff that's not part of the show. So I'm using it as a mobile storage unit right now, but setting up the antenna this Setting it up on Friday took about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and that's just for getting the antennas up. And then I had to set up the interior, and that was a different setup. So uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that again. All right, I'm gonna toss a quick addendum in here. I am at my first overnight after the Hamcation. I'm on my way home. I'm gonna answer the most commonly asked questions from the weekend. First and foremost, either a question or a statement, do you drive with all of this stuff up there? I even heard people when I, they didn't know I was nearby, I would hear them say, oh, there's no way he drives with all this stuff up there, but I do. I've had the setup mounted and testing for about two weeks and drive every day to, uh, to check it out. I'm doing wind testing, load testing to see how the car feels, how it affects the handling. No high performance stuff. I'm not getting crazy with the corning, but I just want to see how it feels testing out the new guys with the sea sucker suction cups and so those are even newer yet those have only been on, for, on there for a week and so uh yes i do drive like that the catch is what you see here in this photo or if you were at the show and you saw it in person this is an exhibition setup i do not have all of this stuff. It's not practical, right? For example, if I'm on a VHF contest, I don't need to have HF antennas mounted because I'm not going to use them. Especially the ATAS 120A, uh, it, it, you might not have been able to spot it, but it's off over on the right side of the car. And I had the boom scoped off over to the left just for show. But if I were to boom over to the right, then there would be an impact, right? The uh, 432 Yagi would hit the ATAS whip and so that's not practical for me to have that whip mounted but still it's i'm not going to have it mounted if i'm doing vhf and likewise if i'm doing some hf activity parks on the air i'm not going to have the vhf stuff mounted with the exception of course of my dual bander 
So the Yagi and Tower setup, those are for, my plan anyway, contests and exhibition only. So obviously Hamcation was an exhibition. In two weeks, I'm gonna be at another car show. That will be an exhibition. And then the same thing when I go to the Raleigh Ham Fest in April, that will be an exhibition. So I'll have everything mounted, the whole, the whole stupid shebang, right? But otherwise, I've made all of that stuff modular so that I can remove pieces as I need and only work with what I need. So that's the catch. Yes, I do drive with it all, but no, I don't always mount it all the time. Next, uh, whether it's a question or an accusation, it's either, oh man, you're not married, are you? Or if they don't know that I'm the owner and I'm standing nearby, they say, wow, this car clearly is not owned by a married person. And <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I've been married for 32 years. And yeah, I, my wife, uh, I'm sure she'd like to see me spend the money on something else, but she is tolerant of my pursuits. She's even been pleased to see some of the reaction to those of you who made comments at Hamcation. Uh, let's see the next question. Uh, how fast can you drive with all of this mounted? And I'm comfortable at 70 miles per hour. And if I need to, I will go up to 75 or maybe even 80 to zip around somebody and then right back down to 70. So there's my speed. Related to that, how often do you get stopped by the police? I have not been stopped yet. I don't know if it's because I'm sure they're curious and they want to ask, but I think they also prefer to pull me over for a better reason. So with that in mind, I do not speed when I have all this there. You know, there's a saying in RV circles, not that I'm an RVer, but I've heard it. If you speed in an RV, you're going to get stopped. Likewise, if I speed with all that junk in the air, I'm going to get stopped. Uh, if nothing more than because the officer is curious and now he has a reason to stop me. So whether it's an improper lane change, speeding, or something unsafe, uh, they, they'll, they'll stop me at that point. So uh, yes, I have not been stopped yet. And to prove that point a little bit, I mentioned earlier that it's windy at Hamcation. Well, the winds did pick up to 20 to 25 miles per hour. And I decided that it was more hazardous to try to remove the, the tower and the Yagis for packaging than it would be just to leave them on the car. I didn't want to risk a gust of wind blowing that tower out of my hands and into the car while I was working with it. And, and even if there was a couple of us on the, on the thing pulling it down, it, it just would have, I wouldn't have wanted to risk it. So I decided that it was safer to just leave everything mounted to the car and just drive it. And so uh, I drove past a lot of police officers that were staked out and not a one of them pulled me over. I got passed by one, he didn't even look at me and I know he noticed, he had to. So yes, no worries at all about that. And that runs me into another question, how does the wind affect you? Well, what a great day to figure that out with 25 mile per hour crosswinds. And it really wasn't that bad. I could feel the car heel over a little bit every now and then if I got a, if I got a good gust, but it wasn't like it push me over or anything like that i could just feel it do this and no no change in the direction of the car or nothing like that and if that's the case in my little 3200 pound hatchback then i think just about anything else would be just fine with that said i doubt that the chesapeake bay bridge tunnel staff would let me cross that bridge in high winds so uh there will be limitations at points, but uh, that the wind alone didn't add a hazard. One more question that got asked a lot, and I was I was surprised that a lot of people thought to ask this. Uh, what does this do to your fuel economy? And and it's not that I'm surprised to have received the question. I'm surprised to have received it so much. So many people wanted to know, and so uh, the. Really, I don't honestly know. My local driving up there in Virginia, usually I would see 28 to 30 miles to the gallon, and then I was seeing 24 to 25 miles to the gallon. What I don't know is if on the interstate, yes, it's higher speed, more drag, but it's also more constant speed. So can I still achieve 25 miles per gallon? I don't know. 
I'll find that out in a couple weeks when I drive to Raleigh with only the setup. I know with the trailer, with the trailer I've been getting 19, that's like towing a brick behind me. But now I've got the trailer and everything on the roof. And so, uh, I don't know, I'm expecting it to go even lower than 19, we'll find out. I haven't driven a full tank yet. I will put a note up to let you know what I got combined for this trip home. Uh, coming down, I, like I said, I got 19, 19 to 21, going home. I think it's gonna be worse, we'll find out. I did get a lot of questions about, of course, what are the, what are the antennas? So my, my little sign that showed everything wasn't necessarily too helpful. I think some people did photograph it and we'll look at it later, but I still got asked the question a lot. I think that's about it. Oh, a lot of people really liked my antenna pass-through. And um, I, I, mean, I didn't necessarily make that with the intention to, uh, to impress a lot of people with it. I just like it to be neat and, and it sure is neat. And so a lot of people really impressed with the antenna pass-through. So all right, uh, let's see uh, if you're into Volkswagens, Come on out to Raleigh. The, I think it's the state fairgrounds to Winter Volksfest or Eurofest on February 25th and the 26th. Uh, will be. It's an indoor show. So if you uh, if you don't like being in the cold, I don't like being in the cold. It's indoors, so that'll be a good thing. And then this Raleigh Fest. I think it's called Rars Fest. Maybe that's Raleigh Amateur Radio. Society, I don't know what the name of their club is, but somebody organizing that indoor ham fest at the same location. So at the state fairgrounds indoors, that's uh, Easter weekend. They've invited me to take the car there and show it. If you would like to see the car in person and live within a, a decent drive of Raleigh, perhaps I will see you there. Well, what an adventure. I've been down here for a left home on Tuesday, today's Sunday. I'm going to drive a little ways today after the show. Show ends around 1 and then the rest of the way home on Monday and then a wrap up. So uh, lots of talking, lots of sun. Who thought you could get sunburned in uh, February, but I did. So a little bit of sunburn and a lot of exposure. I have never shown this to so many hams ever. Uh, my local club has seen it. They appreciate it. Uh, actually, a lot of them haven't seen it in person. They just know about it. So, uh, wow, what a what a crowd! So, thank you for those of you who came by, and uh, and especially if you're a new subscriber to the channel, because I think some of you are discover me as a result of this exhibition. So, I appreciate you paying me a visit. All the cool conversation. It's been fun, and yeah, I hope to see you again soon. As always, I appreciate you being here. And I will talk to you next time. Take care.